to dare to be great, you need to be daring enough to not only face adversity, get over your past, let go of your pain, and think big, but you need to dare to dream. Challenge yourself, be disciplined, and never give up. So, Shanine, we were talking about your marriage, and it ended in divorce, sadly, because it's not something that you advocate for people that are watching. You had rather, I'm sure, have seen God restore both you and your husband. Yeah, I think in the 21st century, there's a, a very easy excuse to say, well, we don't get on, let's have a divorce. I think it's quite sad, and I think that's, no, it's not the way out. Divorce is not of God. And no, that's not a choice that God would want you to make. My story is different, but if anyone's listening right now and having difficulties in their marriage, I really believe that God wants you to stay at it, stay mm -hmm. in it, get help. Yes. There's enough marriage courses yes. out there. Yes. Get help. You can regret it. Mm -hmm. And it, this is my story. I got divorced, but I truly believe we cannot compromise this principle. Mm -hmm. And in the ministry today, there's so many people who are divorcing, and it's not good enough. People are using that as an excuse. So-and-so is divorced. She's anointed. She's used to yeah. love God. And it's okay. But no, I truly believe that God wants to restore marriage and bring healing. And if there's people, Joni, who are listening, who are having difficult times in their marriage, get help. Yeah. It's okay. Be brave. Get help. Help. There's, there's counseling you know? available. There's counseling available there. at every corner of the United States and around the world. Yes. And in this day of CDs and DVDs and book, Christian bookstores, there is help everywhere. Mm -hmm. And it's not like it was, you know, a hundred years ago when no one had any hope. Mm -hmm. So today there's tremendous mm -hmm. hope. And if people will just really make up their, their mind that this is a covenant relationship. Yes. And yes. no matter what, I'm gonna stay in covenant. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's amazing what God can do. Yeah, and, and you know, I mean you I do wanna say, you know, if you're being abused if physically, you know, emotionally, God doesn't want you to live like that Not either. At all. Get to a safe all, place. Yes, get all to a safe we place. recommend that people separate for the purpose of safety and hopefully yeah. restoration. But safety is very important, yes. and a woman and children should not stay someplace where it is if not safe. If you're not safe, you can't work on your restoration. Right. Yeah. You should get safe first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yes. So here you are, you basically get your kids and you know it's going to be a bad situation if there's confrontation. So you quietly walk out of the marriage with your kids, and um, it, ha it hasn't been a good nine-year experience for you in any in any stretch of the imagination, has it? I mean, no, it, it hasn't. I mean, I've you know I had the ch two children, a boy and a girl, and they see the difficulty in your marriage, and they're witnessing yes, that, and it's not good for the children. And my you know my ex-husband, he's. He, there were good days, I and mean, mm. he was a, he was an anointed guy. I don't know what the issues were. I didn't know how to deal with them. Right. But I, there was no one out there to help. Mm -hmm. I was isolated, and right. I think you do isolate yourself, mm -hmm. particularly if you're in leadership. Yes, and you, you keep do. secrets. Yeah, yes, because you, you do. don't want people to know what's going on. Yeah. Right. And then right. the secrets make us more unhealthy. That's, That's it. true. That's and, true. And, and you're, you're afraid what the church is going to mm -hmm. think of you, or people are going to think mm -hmm. you're weak, and they judge you. And the church is harsh. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. um, very harsh. People are harsh. People mm -hmm. are harsh. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying, you know, put knocking the church. You know, that's where we go for support. And there is a lot of support units in church today, which is amazing. But when I was around, it they wasn't. Right. Okay. So. so for your, I mean, as far as your frame of mind at that point, you're thinking, basically, my life in ministry is over. Yeah. It's not like, I mean... I mean, we can see people in the Christian world today who decided to let go of a husband or wife and they've got somebody waiting in the wings. Right, I mean, right. that is just pathetic. It is. I mean, it is. really yes. is. But here you were, you really thought your life was over and God could not use you mm -hmm. because divorce was too big a yeah. mark. I did think that, and particularly in our culture, mm -hmm. being Indian, it was a big mark. You know, it's bad for the family reputation. And being in ministry on top of that, it put my neck out. And, be and began to pastor this church, and now my marriage is not working. Mm -hmm. When all these converts are watching us, mm -hmm. thinking, hold on, if they can't get it together, mm -hmm. who else yeah. can? Right. So that was tough. But I ran away, Joni. I ran away from church life, from Christians, because they were judgmental, they were harsh. And that's people, that's mankind. Humanity sucks, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. let's face it. <laughs> and so the church wasn't the, the place for me, but God was. God never left me. I still wanted him, and uh, I still had my times with him. But I left, um, you know, the environment I worked in and got involved in a very influential area. I got a job in real estate and uh, got to know all high-profile people, partied, dined, lived life. I was enjoying it. It was pretty cool. <laughs> no responsibility. Yeah. I had my kids. They were doing okay at school. And it felt like, wow, I can be me in a different way with none of that baggage. Mm -hmm. I felt released. 
But inside of me, there was a tugging, a calling, a pulling, and pain mm -hmm. of knowing that I didn't fulfill God's plan mm -hmm. and I was failing. Right, and you were on your path, but not God's path. Yeah, I was doing it my way. It was way. fun for a while, though. It was pretty cool. Yeah. I met some great characters. I mean, doesn't the Bible say that? I mean, <laughs> sin is fun <laughs> for a season. For a season. Yes, yes, that's that's for a season. That's right. But then there's that dull ache on the inside, yes. that God-shaped vacuum that only He can fill mm -hmm. when we're doing His created what He created yeah, us yeah. to do. And so, what happened? Well, I, it was interesting. Well, I we of... want you to come back over to our side. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got involved yeah. in all these kind of really nice party life, and I enjoyed. It, and it was great. You know, I did some modeling and I got into radio, Christian radio, so that kept me in good footage. And I, uh, <laughs> you I was so, good about you. Yeah, yeah. I, had, I was surrounded by Christian women all the time, and there was yeah, always something yeah. to talk about and put you yeah. on track. And I thought, this is great. But you know, my hus I got married again, and um, my husband got saved. He had a radical change in his life. And that was it. Um, the church asked us to lead a pastorate. And I thought, my husband was so excited with his transformation. And he said, yes, we've got to lead. And let's, let's really do something together, Shanine. And I thought, no way. I thought, look, you can become a Christian, but you know, we don't need to get involved in leadership. <laughs> Hold on a sec, you know, you calm down. <laughs> Besides, you felt disqualified. I felt disqualified. Mm -hmm. I thought, I've got the mark of divorce. But anyway, the church asked us to be leaders. And that night, I went home. This is amazing. And there's a voice inside of me saying, put the TV on. It's one, two in the morning. Put the TV on. I thought, no, that can't be God. He never tells me to put the TV on. <laughs> Why is he telling me to put the TV on? And I heard it again. Put the TV on now. I put the television on, and a man called Steve Hill came on. Yes. <laughs> he said, you woman of God, you've been running away from the call of God. And he was the anointing on this mm. man's life. He said, stop running. He said, you was a pastor's wife. You're hiding right now. He goes, I'm speaking to you, and I'm asking you to repent, come back. Oh. He said, God is calling you right now. As he spoke, it was like a, a piercing sword going into my heart. I just wept. Mm. And this presence of the Holy Spirit just came into my room and enveloped me. Mm. It took over, and it, my whole body was shaking with fire. And I wept for three hours, nonstop, and that was my healing. I repented. I surrendered. Yes. I said, okay, God, I surrender. The moment I love that word, surrender. Yes. Oh, that's a good word. The moment I surrendered, there was a transition that took place in the heavenlies for the call of God in my life, and I felt it. I ran upstairs, told my husband, and I said, Martin, I'm going back to the call of God. He said, what? What's happening? <laughs> I said, I feel the presence. Can't you feel it? He's like, no. I, what's going on? I said, you know, I'm going to go and see my ex-husband, and I'm going to ask for his forgiveness. I'm going to tell him I'm going back to the call of God. So four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning, I drove down to see my ex-husband, and I put it right with him. And I said, I met with God this morning, and I want to tell you that. I'm knocking at his door, you know, it's five o'clock in the morning. Wow. I'm a dare, I'm not, okay? But <laughs> well, that's women. Was he <laughs> married at this time? He was single. Okay. I sat with him in the car, and I told him I was going to do this. But you were married. I was married. He, he was still he single. He was single. Okay. But I wanted to get it right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't want anything to be in that's the way. Good. So I sat with him in the car, and I said, I want you to forgive me if I've hurt you, and I want you to pray with me that as I take this call on the next level there'd be nothing to stop me mm. and, and he said one thing he said never ever put the ministry before your children mm. wow. and I looked at him and I said you're right mm -hmm. and I think a lot of people do that they yes, neglect they their do. children they're busy yes, and they they're, they're gifting they neglect and their they're, husbands, or their and they're husbands and I knew that was a key in my life you know the families first you know the children being with them and I left him and we left at peace and then of course, I went back. I was invited to the House of Lords in London, which is pretty cool. And there's this woman, we had a prayer meeting there, and she is, was prophesying on everyone. And I said, God, whatever you do, don't call me out publicly, OK? If you want to speak to me, speak to me privately. So I was kind of having a negotiation going on with God. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sitting with all these sort of lords and ladies in London. So this woman, she says, you woman in the green, come out. And I went, oh, God, do you have to do this? And then she started to prophesy over my life. And she said, God's going to use you and connect you with all these key people internationally and uh, God's going to use your Bible study in London with very influential people and he did and he's I got done that, hasn't he? he's mm -hmm. done exactly that and that was it and then I started the Ritz Tees a woman's call Tees at the Ritz wow. oh that is so awesome we are talking with Shanine Clark today dare to be great forget your past live your dreams stay right where you are when we come back final thoughts that will take you from average to outstanding when the table wraps stay right where you are